the best part of the trailer. Everyone's always asking me, how do you make really good meals, but on a budget? I tell them, use my six to one method. Whenever I'm shopping, I get six veggies, five fruits, four proteins, three starches, two sauces or spreads, and of course, one fun thing for me. Tonight, I'm hosting a dinner party with my friends, and I don't have all day to be in the kitchen, and I'm looking to spend under $150. For the menu, we're doing brown sugar roasted carrots, a one pot tender and juicy baked chicken, smashed loaded potatoes that are out of this world, mac and cheese my way with one of my favorite not so secret ingredients, and a big and colorful winter salad with some buttery cornbread croutons. Now let's put this method to the test. The grocery store. Oh yeah. Yeah, ready to go shopping. Green onions. Probably need green, yellow, and red onions. So that's just the onion family in general. I need herbs, mushrooms, squash, shallots, garlic. I'm gonna grab some apples. We're not here for fun. Sorry. Our oranges. Chicken over there. Sour cream. That's fat free, I don't want that. More like it. Regular half and half. Biggest decision, which pasta to get the macaroni noodles. That's the thing, uh, this is giving basic, stick to the rules. I think I'm gonna do ziti. I wonder if cheese would be good on mac and cheese. My one fun item. All done shopping, let's hope this is on budget. Please. <laughs> one bag's enough. And just like that, we're all done grocery shopping for 20 people, and it was $120, like $128. Not too bad though. All right, we spent under $130, now let's get into the kitchen and start cooking. So New York. Woo! We made it home. All right, we're in my kitchen. Grocery shopping wasn't too bad, but I'm excited to be cooking now. The first thing I do when I unpack my groceries is make a quick prep list to keep me organized and keep things flowing. We're gonna start things off by washing and slicing our produce, crisping up our bacon, getting our potatoes boiling, getting our noodles boiling. The basic prep things you wanna get out the way. We have our hands full, but I'm ready. First up, we're gonna see our chicken and season it with salt and pepper, plenty of it. Taking the chicken out the pan, cause it's time to build our sauce. It's all golden brown, crispy, but it's still a little raw in the middle. And to my pan with all that flavor, I'm gonna add in my peppers and onions and cook it until it's tender and slightly caramelized. You can also add some chopped garlic in halfway through. Can be more easier than this, y'all. Once the onions sweat down, you can also add your mushrooms. We got a big pan here, but this is all gonna cook down. Okay, our veggies are looking real tender. I'm gonna add my crispy chicken right on top. Let it get real cozy. We're gonna top it with some orange juice, a little bit of butter, and I have some wine laying around, so why not pour a little bit into the chicken? And it'll cook off while it's cooking, of course, but add a nice, rich, deep flavor. If you don't have wine, just use chicken broth. I'm gonna cover with the lid and put it in the oven until the chicken is fully cooked. Look at that, how easy. Okay, for our smashed potatoes, I have my cooked potatoes right here, and I'm gonna put them right onto a large baking tray that's covered with parchment. And I'm gonna smash each potato right on here and give it a big topping with bacon and cheddar cheese. You can smash the potato with a bottom of a drinking glass, just like that. Keep it simple, keep it simple. I'm gonna give the potatoes a little bit of salt action, but not too much because the bacon is salty. A little bacon right on top. 
and I'm gonna put it under the cheese so that the bacon doesn't burn in the oven. And I'll save a little extra bacon for garnish when it's all done. And a very generous sprinkle of Monterey Jack, which you can use whatever cheese you like. The whole bag, why not? Perfect. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, let it get bubbly, golden brown. When it's done, I'm gonna to top it with green onions and some sour cream, and maybe a little bit more surprises. We're gonna cook our pasta for our macaroni and cheese. And don't forget to salt your pasta water. I'm telling y'all, it makes a difference, truly. All right, my mac and cheese noodles are done. Let's make our cheese sauce to bring this entire dish together. For our cheese sauce, I'm gonna melt down some butter and mix in some flour to make a roux. Once the roux is a light golden brown color, I'm gonna stir in some half and half. Okay, let's finish up with mac and cheese. I have my sour cream that I'm using for my smashed potatoes, but I'm also gonna use this for my mac and cheese as well. I'm trying to get rid of it, y'all. And we're cooking on the budget. Stir it in, off the heat. And I'm also gonna add my shredded cheese right in. And keep on stirring it. Garlic powder for flavor. Paprika for flavor and color. And of course, some salt. And pepper. I'm gonna add my ziti noodles in. And the key is you want more sauce than noodles so things don't get dry in the oven. Booyah, mac and cheese is done. Put the mac into a thick baking dish. That's a lot of mac and cheese. I bet you it's gonna be all gone in minutes, seconds. All right, this is where we're gonna have some fun at. I always top my mac and cheese with extra cheese on top. But I was like, you know what? I want some texture this time, and I don't want to do breadcrumbs. Why not do cheeses? It has that sharp cheddar taste. It's crunchy. I'm gonna just crush them up in my hands and put it right on top. Have fun with your food. This is my one fun item I got for myself. Look at me putting it to use. I'm so selfless. So crush them up pretty roughly, and then combine it all together. All right, let's put it in the oven. When's the last time you had to cheese it? This is good. Okay, now on to the carrots. This is a vegetable side dish that I can literally clear my plate with, and my friends say it's famous. It's for good reason, and it's really simple. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's everything you need when you want a vegetable side dish. So I got brown sugar right here. I'm gonna add my backyard barbecue seasoning. By bold, it has chipotle powder, paprika, chili, everything you need, one jar. We have sweet, spicy. Also gonna use that orange that I got from the grocery store. I'm gonna zest it right in there for some brightness. And I'm gonna use a fat pinch of salt or two. Now mix that all together. It should look like wet sand a little bit because of brown sugar. And that orange smells so good. Brown sugar mixture going right on the carrots. And to top things off, I'm gonna also squeeze some orange juice on top. Would you believe how easy that was? Toss it together. Give it some olive oil. And you're all set. Put those babies in the oven until they're caramelized and tender, and you know what to do. All right, our carrots are all done. Looking gorgeous, slightly charred, sticky. I know they're a little spicy. I'm gonna put them on a big serving plate and garnish them with some chopped parsley. And that's all. Mmm, mm-hmm. Sticky, spicy, smoky. That backyard barbecue? Keep that thing on you. I'm gonna start off with a homemade vinaigrette. You can buy a store by vinaigrette, you know, at the store, but it's okay, it's okay. I'm making homemade, homemade. I got some good olive oil in here. These are all pantry ingredients you always just have in your pantry anyways. Got some apple cider vinegar. You can use red wine vinegar too. 
some mustard, stone ground preferred, or Dijon, and uh, some honey for some balance. Earlier at the store, I bought some tahini and I literally looked everywhere for it, couldn't find it, finally found it, so we're using it in our salad. Give it that nutty flavor, and we're gonna mix it together. Add some salt to it. And you have a simple vinaigrette. Quick taste, perfect, mmm, perfect. Add the kale in, the lemon, our toppings, and we're all set. To me, every good salad needs croutons. Today I'm making a cornbread crouton using some store-bought cornbread. Go ahead and chop it up into uh, half inch pieces. Who wants them to just be bite-sized? And they're gonna crumble a bit as you fry them in the pan, so don't worry about it. The key to a really good kale salad, you gotta massage it. Because kale can be really, really tough. So when you massage it with the vinaigrette, it creates a really tender green that you're gonna enjoy eating. And the longer it sits in that dressing, the more flavorful it's gonna be, the more tender it's gonna be. So try to make it about 30 minutes before guests come. A little more red onion on top. Got some apple going on. You can just massage that in a little bit. I roasted butternut squash. Some pomegranates that guests can dick out themselves. And some crumble bacon on top. Just some extra flavor. amazing to spend time with my girls and I'd be exhausted from spending hours in the kitchen cooking. I even had enough money left in my budget to purchase some wine, which made for the perfect nightcap. I'll see you all next time on the Stock Up. Let me know what I should cook next.